No matter when we got into crypto, we all looked back on the charts and saw some huge lows. And we said to ourselves, I wish I could buy at that price. Absolutely right. We want to buy at lows. Buying at lows sets us up for selling high, which is why we really got into crypto. So that we could buy low in order to sell high. Now, how do we know when we are at lows? Are we presently at a bottom? Or is the bottom much further down? Is this a low or is this a sign we're in for a two-year crypto winner? Lots of crypto people are saying that. And we do want to thank all our Rainmaker audiences from people like you that want to learn about the crypto market cycles, but also deeper fundamentals of the project in the crypto space as crypto brings about this Web3 revolution and a digital ownership society. Thanks for tuning in, even while the price has been down, because I say when the price are down, crypto gets boring. Yet many of you are here. So congratulations to you. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I am your host, Jay Rain. Now, if you like money and crypto and you're looking for a real investor take on the crypto market, consider joining the Rainmaker family. You can do that simply as liking this video, subscribing with that all notifications bell enabled. I'm not a financial advisor, though. I am a crypto investor myself, sharing with you how I think about the crypto market and specific cryptos I like. I also own or plan to own most of what I talk about on this channel that I bring up because I don't talk about cryptos that I don't believe in. We want to also thank our Patreon members who have been big supporters and some new members um, that I think I shouted them out already, but that's Andy Mobs and the Drama Plug. We have a private Discord that our Patreon members get access to. There is a link below to our Patreon if it's of interest to you. It is a closed group. There are things I can say there that I can't in other places. Now, the beginning of YouTube often says that this is contains sponsored content. That's because of our strategic relationship with Wanchain and Kitsuman, who have been good to us and given us lots of goodies to give away to you. Monday, we gave away a Kitsu, and it... If you watch that video for Monday, the live stream, you can see what you can do to participate for the three that we're going to give away on Friday. These NFTs have a good value. Really cool project. So check that out. All right. Make it rain on that like button and strap in for the show. Let's welcome our producer, D Money. What is up, Jay? How's it going, man? Fantastic. Man, I like doing these remote streams. Uh, we are not in the command center today, but what I really miss is the freaking, I miss the the beat at the beginning. Like, you know, like that always gets me pumped and it just sounds like so empty. Like, you know, so maybe we should. Like, I can go ahead and hit up. this for us. Watch this. Listen to this. I got it coming. <laughs> oh, there we go. I know, right? I, I love the beat. Um, so... Charlie out of the UK recorded this for us. And then actually one of our audience members, Seth, he remastered it and did a phenomenal job on the remaster and took it from, I would say like us, as far as the beat and the music behind it, he took it all the way to the beat to be like a 9.9 .9 out of 10. He, he really nailed it. Um, thank you to him and his hard work for really making that exceptional. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, new nurse Cooper just said <laughs> the only reason I show up is for the song. So yeah, sorry to disappoint you, man. Like, <laughs> I think we'll be back in the command center on Friday, hopefully. Uh, so. Yeah, and anyway. we've some inclement weather here as well as some other things coming up. And I don't know about you guys, but I was absolutely paying attention for the NFL all day market as it went live. So I could try to make some good pickups. I got like... A, little over like almost a dozen pickups in that first 40 minutes. And I wouldn't say they were great pickups. They were pickups though. Yeah. So what's up Rainmaker. So that did cut into our prep time and we did record tomorrow's show. Um, interesting. Check that out because actually one of the ones from the viewer suggestions, I wrote down to absolutely put on my list to buy um, for today. And so you'll have to see what that was. I think I said it right in the recording. I was like, I'm making a note for that because I am going to buy that one. Yes, you did, because I made a note of it myself <laughs> after you made a note of it. And Paul was so, yeah, he was pretty, you know, it was, it was an interesting one. So anyway, let's get the party started and uh, do yeah, we'll get going. Join me, 
You know, speaking of that, in the command center, we should really have on the TVs behind, you know, that gold rain coming down, kind of like the Matrix, but with gold and with like crypto symbols just like that. That would be amazing. We'll have to find a nice artist that can do that for us. Maybe one of our audience members knows how to do that. If so, I have a one chain bounty for you that I'll pay out of my personal funds. Um, We would love something like that. Just stream in the background, right? But instead of using the matrix screen, let's let's make it with crypto and like a gold focus because really it is raining gold to us, especially if you think of gold, gold, like Bitcoin has become like the alternative to gold. Now, what am I talking about? The market sucks right now and it does. This is part of the crypto space. It's hit us really hard because I don't know about you, but I was hoping December would be strong. Now, I knew about this potential for lengthening cycles, but I held on to that hope all the way through the 8th or 9th of December. By then, we just didn't have enough pickup going on. That's like, okay, this is not going to happen. It's definitely going to be the lengthening cycles theory where, you know, the major boom is probably going to come later this year, unfortunately, because December's timing would have been much, much better for all of us. But the market does what the market is going to do. And maybe there was too many of us hoping for December to happen. And so it's gone the other way. And that's all right. We're nearing the end of February. We still have some more time before this can happen. In fact, when I was drawing out the lengthening cycles possibility all the way back in like September and July of last year, I showed you that Bitcoin might peak as late as late May. 2022 and it still may do that so we're in february we'll have a better idea if it's going to play out that way probably by april bitcoin should be booming already and should be at some really high numbers so by then we'll know we're in this kind of market lull so i'm going to share with you a story hopefully you caught monday's story this is a different story This is a story of Brandon. Brandon joined the crypto market like many of the audience in March of 2021. He had been saving some funds in investments and a few other places, saving up for a down payment on a home, feeling priced out of everything because the real estate markets around the world have gone crazy. And he was introduced to crypto from a friend. And as he looked into it, he saw it was much deeper than just Bitcoin being an alternative to gold. And that got him really excited. Now, a lot of buzz was going on about Bitcoin at the time, and he saw his investments double in a matter of a few weeks, but then everything started pulling back. His girlfriend was supportive, but concerned, as he saw his values go to just 25% of what he had put in during the next 10 months. Still, Brandon was tenacious. He refused to get shaken out. He held and held, and he made pretty good placements in a few projects with strong fundamentals and decided he was going to hold it all the way to success or the death of the projects. Now, fast forward by mid 2023, he had seen his tenacity play out. His portfolio had gone crazy and he was up 15 X in stables from what he had put in. He had taken out profits on the way up and he had cashed out 90% of his alt portfolio into stable coins and was looking at different places to put those for a return. He had weathered the many, many storms and the many chances to sell when news had everyone scared, like the potential World War III, the wars in Ukraine, or just all the concerns that had come up during those times and many times he almost gave in but his stubbornness kept him in he knew he was on to things and he refused to get shaken out by temporary setbacks i wanted to share with you brandon's story because first there are many pressures to sell and bail out but it's helpful when we see what the odds show us things look like and what they really look like potentially in a year to a year and a half from now Obviously, Brandon's story is based on some people's story, but projects into the future what it really probably looks like 18 months from now. And that's just playing the probabilities. If you look at the history of cryptocurrency, we're still on the technology adoption curve, and it is generally parabolic. But from month to month or even quarter to quarter, even six month periods, that doesn't mean it doesn't have huge retracements, play with our emotions, have our portfolio way, way down. And it gives us 
pressure to just give in and give up. Now, I chose the name Brandon as a shout out to my Irish friends. One of our viewers commented on a video about how I say the word another. I went to reply to him on my phone and I totally accidentally hit the delete button instead of the reply button. And um, he said, I say another like the Irish do, which is interesting. You know, he asked if my family has spent time in Ireland. My father spent years in Ireland, so perhaps I picked it up from him. So thank you for tuning in from Ireland. A lot of fun. I absolutely adore your accents. I love them. So, yeah, unfortunately, we don't get to unless you're in our discord and you join us on the, the pre streams. I don't get to hear your accent coming this way. So back to the market, what does the market have in store for us? Well, to summarize, the market has in store for us bad things and good things. Are we near the bottom or is the bottom much, much deeper? Well, my guess is we are near the bottom. That is a guess. I am prepared in case it goes much, much lower, but I don't expect it will. The market pain is a lot of what it felt like in July of last year. Looking back at the charts of July, let's do that so we can look at some actual data so let me show you what i'm looking at now i've been in crypto for four years now which isn't all that long but an attorney at the same time in fact it's going on four and a half years and so i've seen a lot of this stuff and a lot of these reasons why the crypto market is going to just keep dumping and why it's going to go to crazy crazy lows and then a lot of the times it doesn't and a few of the times it does. Now, generally, I still think we're in for a bull market that our top, the previous uh, cycles top was at 20,000. We've hit uh, 3.5 X from that. I really think we have a lot longer ways to go and, and we're just not there yet. And right here, it is just shaking out as many people as it can before a much bigger run. I remember when I was brand new in crypto and I was watching this guy's video who had a YouTube channel and he had started investing a year prior and he had bought into this company Tron and it kind of pumped and then it retraced and it was below where he was at and the market did this dip and he just got sick of it and he sold all of his Tron right before Tron went 100x. And I was thinking, gosh, because right then all I had to look at was the charts. I was like, what insanity? Why would somebody sell when it's so low when they could have just held? Of course, I had the advantage of seeing what the charts turned into. All he could see was up to that point, And it was just this downward slope, downward slope. OK, it goes up. Oh, then it goes down some more. And he sold right near the bottom. And it's amazing how many people sell right near the bottom. So this is Bitcoin's chart. And we see, you know, I, I was talking with D. We were talking about the NFL um, all day and the marketplace is finally live. I really think that'll do really well. Now, I made a small fortune from NBA Top Shots when it launched. And I remember the general market sentiment when NBA Top Shots launched. It was kind of like this. The market was down. It was about October, November 2020, right? 2020. And everyone was just feeling down and beat up and like black eyes and everybody's portfolio is down. And these NBA Top Shot moments came out and I was like, oh, these are video moments. They're kind of like collectible cards. And those did really well if you got in in, you know, season one of when it released. So I think these will do well. And I put about $1,100 in. That $1,100 in March went all the way to $185,000 and has since retraced. Last I checked, it was hovering between $32,000 to $50,000 for those moments. But still, I mean, that's up, you know, like crazy numbers, 35 to 50x from what I invested, though it's not near as high as it was. And so these NFL moments, they're pr probably getting bid up a lot to a lot higher prices than what the NBA top shots launched at but still i mean there's some real value there even if you don't follow the nfl i don't follow the nfl i did watch the recent super bowl just so i could see what was going on um but i don't really follow the nfl but these moments will probably do well because it, they're a major world sport that's watched in many places around the world and it's season one of these digital collectibles so as I was thinking about that and we, we were talking with D, I was like, you know what? The market feels exactly like it did 
back then. And let me show you kind of what happened around that time frame. So we're looking at this, but this is what it looked like back then. See, the market had been down and, and here had been the pump of the previous, uh, not, this doesn't go back to show 2017, but it come all the way down here, come to about 3,400, I think at the bottom or 3,200. It did this weird pump in the middle of the bear market that was like, oh my gosh, it went all the way to 14,000. I was like, what the heck? It shouldn't be doing this. Sure enough, I was right on that. It shouldn't have been doing that. And it corrected. It come way down here and it had absolutely obliterated the market on this day. I had a leverage long. So this day is super memorable to me. It was a very, very low leverage long. So I felt like I was really, really safe putting it in around 7,200. It absolutely got liquidated on the strong wick down. And um, yeah, I lost about 13,000 that day, which would be worth about 65,000, you know, in today's Bitcoin value. Um, yeah. And then the market started proceeding upward. And around this time frame, this is when NBA Top Shots was being released. And see how it's just kind of playing around here. And, you know, we couldn't see that yet. It was just like really slow. And you just felt beat the heck up. And my guess is that's what you're feeling now. Because I see that in a lot of our sentiments and a lot of our engagement. And that is normal. Yet you're still here. And the fact that you're still here means you're probably still invested may mean that you're even buying at these lows. And that usually is followed by something that looks like this. Now, I don't have a magic crystal ball. The one I bought at Walmart, you know, doesn't function right. It's wrong. I So what I do is I play the odds. And that's all investors that we do. I try to take lopsided odds where I'm buying where my chances of winning are far higher than my chances of losing. Or... Even if I have a 50-50 chance, if I lose, um, well, my losses are a lot smaller than the gains of if I'm right. And so really, as investors, we're just playing the chances. Now, if you look back every time that there's a massive retracement and then you buy, how does it generally work out for you over the longer term? Well, pretty well, right? So massive retracement here and then followed by this massive retracements down here followed by this massive retracements here. What's coming next? Who knows? Probably really, really good stuff. I want to go to one that has a little bit more history because that doesn't show the previous market. I think Binance will show. Uh, Binance, you're failing us. I know this one. Brave new liquid coin index because I want better history for you to look at. Now, massive retracements. This is one of my favorite charts. See these what the F lows? Isn't that <laughs> the best way to caption it, right? So massive retracements and then you buy. How does it generally end up for you? Now, not always good in the short term. What if you had bought after this massive retracement here? So you got it all the way down to 11,000. You were holding it for a while before it was even equal to what you did. But then say you had bought it clearly back or way, way back in December 2017 and you had held it for four years. Well, even with these retracements, you're still massively up and you're, you're uh, what is that? About 3x up. So a lot of in the crypto space, um, why I sh talk about patience a lot is because in the short term, it's really, really hard to predict exactly what's going to do. But in the longer term, it goes really well for you. So as Randy Crypto Savage says, patience is the most difficult thing when we're expecting to be rewarded. Yeah, you nailed it with that. Absolutely. It's it's hard to be patient. And that's why, because when I was new to this space, I was like, this technology is booming and everyone was coming in at the same time as me. But uh, I like to ask questions. I was like, OK, tons of people are coming in at the same time with me. What about everyone who probably came in earlier? Like, where is everyone from 2013? Why are none of them here? Why are so few here? Like Ivan on tech was there, but even everyone in YouTube was like brand new at that time. Right. And I was like, where are the people from 2013? Do you know BitBoy got started in 2013 and then he left the market for like five years? Um, so I was like, and, and I didn't have an answer to that. Where was everyone? In the crypto winter and the big pullback that followed, it became clear. Well, 95% of people leave. It's the 5% that stick around during times when I call boring in crypto. That means the price action is way down. 
they're the ones that make record numbers. I mean, Ivan on tech is extremely successful. He's under 30 years old. If I had to guess worth a couple hundred million dollars by now, um, where else can you make that kind of wealth being that young? I mean, Sam Bankman frees it in the billions and he's just been in crypto for a while. Now it, it's okay if we're not as lucky as him or I wouldn't call it luck. Nobody achieves that kind of success by just luck. A lot of that's hard work too. And some very favorable, a few things going your way, but a lot of that is tenacity. So I, I can't credit his massive success to luck because I, I don't think that'd be fair to him. Yeah. But, Jay, and I mean, and the reality is, is that like, you know, his like a billion dollars, like a couple billion dollars or, or a few hundred million, like most of us aren't that greedy. Right. I mean, maybe some of us are, but like, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm good with like, if I could pay my house off, you know, and have like, right, like, like have some life changing wealth yeah. in that way, right, where now I've freed up some of my income every month. And, you know, so so that's the opportunity, like, like, there probably is some luck, there's some hard work. But like, for me, you know, to have life changing wealth, I don't need a $100 million, you know, and, and that's what I'm open for on this first cycle. Yeah, you, you hit like, and so if you look at both of those examples, they've been around for more than just one cycle. And it does take a couple of cycles, which is why I talk about a five year plan of being here, not just this cycle, but then the following one and sticking around during the crypto winter. And that's what a lot of people mess miss out on. But everyone I know that stuck around with that formula so far has already achieved life changing wealth. Like the friends that I know that stuck around during the bear market and just kept plugging money in, they're all worth millions of dollars. Um, now they had decent paying incomes, you know, between 50 to $120,000 a year. And they plugged in a whole bunch into Cardano and some other things during the downturn when everything was cheap. And they're already worth millions of dollars and Cardano hasn't even peaked yet. And so I know that formula works. What I don't know is the timing. Do I still think a massive leg of the bear run is coming? I do, or bull run? I do. I think this is just the shakeout. Notice the saying, the market takes the most amount of money from the most amount of people. Well, how would it do that if it didn't shake out at most of the people because it had them really, really scared before it then runs like crazy? Notice that person that I don't even think he's around on YouTube anymore. He sold out right before Tron pumped. Why? Because there's real fears. When you look back at the charts and you think, oh my gosh, I wish I could buy it this what the F low, I'm going to add this to the stream so I can share with you this chart. This what the F low. Well, there was a lot of fear that day. There was a ton of fear. So people were thinking, oh my gosh, the market's over. Bitcoin's dead. It's not going to be able, it's not going to have enough hash power to keep it secure because so many people are selling and all these miners are stopping mining and Bitcoin is going to die. So there were real fears. So those, those that were in the market were freaked out, right? So when you hear a lot of people saying, oh, my gosh, we're in for the bear market. Well, that's part of what freaks people out to sell to bring us to these lows before we can hit a bigger high. Now, maybe they're right. Usually they're not, especially since we've only gone three and a half X from our previous all time high. You just can't see it not hitting over one hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred thousand before this bull run is truly over. Let me share with you some other charts about buying on the pullbacks, right? So ETH, we're all waiting for ETH to be upgraded so we don't have to hate the transaction fees. But generally, I mean, I remember, so it it broke about, it went to 1400 during the previous run in January. It got really, really cheap, retraced, even though it doesn't show it here. I remember buying ETH for like $77 per ETH during the crypto winter. Don't you wish you could rewind time to be around when nobody else was buying E for $77. Well, you're probably the personality that would do that because you're here now. And so that says a lot about it. Some people have tuned out and that's okay. You know, one of the massive YouTube channels was talking about their subscriber numbers have gone down in count because people are tuning out. Their views are down 75% from what they normally are. And that's because a lot of people tune out when there's bad news and they just leave the market, but they end up missing all these lows and they end up coming back in after a lot is pumped. And so it's really those that just stick around 
like my friends that are all rich now from the crypto winter, like they listen to YouTube actually every day during the crypto winter. And they were like, you know, it, it gets old and stuff, but they're like, they would listen to a certain channel that I used to listen to that I like. That person is no longer so active anymore on YouTube, but like I liked his mindset that he was an investor first and he thought like an investor and he had a finance background and uh, he would pump us up because we needed something to pump us up and we'd get all jazzed and we'd go out and buy a bunch of Cardano at like four cents and then, you know, like three and a half cents. And he continued to share the vision of what Cardano and some of these other projects were doing. And um, that's how we kind of made it through a hard period was that we had somebody, I guess in some ways, we all kind of met a little bit later on in that cycle, but we all had been watching like the same YouTube channel at the time. And that gave us, I guess, something to tune into that kind of got us excited to really hold in there when most of the people had left. So we're here right now. ETH is way down 20, you know, it's getting close to 2,500. A ton of people have left. But what if our curve looks something like this? And just like those people that sold Tron and end up missing out on huge returns, and then it goes parabolic, and maybe ETH does end up hitting 10,000 that many people have said, or even 20,000. <clears> Let's look at Luna. I mean, Luna is kind of funny because I hadn't really paid attention to Luna when it was way down here. I didn't want to understand why the Luna ecosystem was so different until it was about $11. And by then I wasn't going to chase these green candles. So when it came down all the way in July, I remember it being at these lows and I was like, oh, time to pick up on Luna because everybody was fudding on it. And I was like, I had learned during these green days why Luna was different and what made it cool. But during these red days, I was like, hmm, I think I'm finally going to buy some. So I bought, I don't know, about $7,000 worth at these lows. And then it absolutely went crazy up to here. And since has had a retracement, who knows? I mean, this is because Anchor Protocol, they've agreed to fund it, selling some founder tokens and stuff. And so that that was a concern that like one of the big things on Luna is Anchor Protocol, which pays almost 20 percent interest. Well, some things haven't been going right and they were worried that they weren't going to be able to pay 20 percent interest anymore. And so some of the founders volunteered to have some of their tokens sold to use it to replenish the funds there so it can continue paying out 20 percent. And that's probably what caused this big green wick here is going good. But like, you know, buying when it's boring. Now, is this retracement good enough that I'd be adding to my Luna position? It's not. I'm looking for prices that are savaged. And there are tons of prices out there that are savaged. So stay tuned to tomorrow's episode with Paul, where we talk about some of the ones that many of you have suggested, including one that I was like, OK, I'm buying this. And I took a note to buy it. All right. I want to check out what's going on with the chat. Chris Ashbay, thank you for joining us. He also sent me a heads up. Um, I put a bounty out for whoever gave me a message that the NFL all day marketplace was open for trading. It was supposed to open yesterday. It did not. Well, it did, but it wasn't working. So they postponed it for today and they actually gave us an exact time. So I was paying attention to that exact time, but the bounty is still good. So I'll check Discord and see who hit me up with that first. Aries Orbase, I haven't seen your name. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Love to have you. Um, yeah, Ricky Schmidt, longtime OMI holder, but got my first VV NFT after trying for 20 plus drops. Oh my gosh. He got the rare secret, uh, secret rare Black Panther this morning. Fan wow, no freaking way. Dude, that's that awesome. So awesome. I got burned. I got nothing. Doctor of Stuff got nothing. Yeah, I was yeah. lucky. I, I got a common. So, you know, I need to not like be so, you know, whatever. I'm happy I got one. But like every time that I get that blind box, like I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, maybe this is gonna be the one. Maybe this is gonna be the one where you know where I get the secret rare. That's awesome that Ricky pulled it. That's so rad. I love to see when when our community members are getting getting good drops like that good people yeah he even got a good mint number on it 1206 which is awesome 
So congratulations on that. I think the Black Panther one is one of the better drops that they've done. I probably outperformed the Captain American over over time. I mean, he's just such a likable hero. Those movies were awesome. I yeah, don't know anyone sure. who didn't absolutely adore the Black Panther movies, like the Wakanda, like the technology, the the actors were tremendous. They they did so good on the characters. They were so likable. Um, I just think that one's going to have a lot of significance in the future. So I would hold well, on to that. Yeah, and I mean, and sadly, like with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, like there's that aspect to it where like he became like an even more beloved character because of what, you know, for all reports and intense purposes, all that, what a good person Chadwick Boseman was and how tragic it was that, you know, that he passed away at such a young age. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that that's going to be one, like you said, that will eventually outperform Captain America and be one of the higher, you know, Marvel uh, collectible NFTs. Um, Rapungus asks, hey, Rain, do you post your trades slash moves in your Patreon? I do. I, I do put them in there. So I think the gold members get access to that. And I think now sometimes I do post even at the regular members. I share it a little bit later, but I try to post it first so gold and above can see it the fastest. And then I share it. And, and sometimes I share the alpha here, too. I try to keep a lot of alpha for here. But if you want to get the most alpha, joining the Discord does help. Because I know the people that join our Patreon are, like, super committed. And you can you can get started for as low as, like, 20 bucks a month. Which, for some people, that's a huge ton of money. For a lot of us, like, $20 a month. We spend that eating out once per month. And so it just shows like a commitment level that I know these people are serious. So I do give them additional information because they've shown that commitment level. Well, and the reality is, is that like, we're only, we're live three times a week, four times a week now with the, with the VB chat that we'll have tonight. Um, but like, it, you know, so obviously like discord, that's a way where you can be like, yeah, Hey, like I just saw this, I'm making this trade boom, you know? And so, um, I don't think that it's a matter of like not wanting to share everything on the channel, but just, I mean, the nature of YouTube, like Jay can't just go live every time he makes a trade and tell, and tell you guys. So anyway, thanks for the question. Yeah. I try to give the best alpha there. Our telegram chat that you can join below. I often call out some of the trades. You can still join that for free. So, um, and the community in there is amazing as well. In fact, a lot of the people that you see on the live streams, you'll see there in the community. So um, that's cool. Everyone's congratulating um, Ricky for, yeah, th that's awesome that you've been a long time a Comey holder, but uh, first time getting a drop. <laughs> I love that your first drop that you got was a secret rare. What's funny is, is it, it is the odds, right? That if you just keep playing the odds, they work out in your favor. I didn't get this drop, but this month I've probably gotten three out of the mini drops. The comics I never get anymore. My wife got one, but um, the blind boxes sometimes I'm lucky on. Thaddeus Lund asks, have I heard of Cosmic Universe on Harmony One? Really recommend checking out if you have not. They just had their first land sell. Shoot, that would have been good for me to see it beforehand. Maybe the general market is down enough. I am big on select land opportunities, right? So a solid project that is offering land that has a really solid team, I'm I'm really big on because um, Metaverse land, I think, will do exceptionally well. If you look at some of my big return on investment, Axie Infinity land, I missed the origin Axie sale. I didn't know about Axie Infinity then, but when they opened up their land sale about day three, I learned about it and it was open for like nine months and I loaded up on land in the Axie Infinity land sale. And then for the next year and a half, it proceeded to do terrible. It actually decreased to probably, probably lost like 60 to 80% of my value. If I were to try to sell those on the resale market and then they did tremendous, went over 100x, and then eventually um, the prices did 1,000x from where they had been. So why? Well, because land has some of the same attributes in the metaverse that make it valuable here. It's if, if it's scarce, in a lot of these projects, it is scarce. 
So then the second question is, is it desirable? And that's the big question. Is it desirable? Well, as Axie Infinity became the number one play to earn game, well, was the land associated with that desirable? It was still scarce. So it became desirable, and that's why it pumped even more than the AXS token did. And it did about a thousand, I think at one point, like 2,000 X. So um, will that one do well? It depends on the desirability of it. But Harmony One is a blockchain that has done really well. So it could be. Hey, Rain, just wondering how you feel about Litcraft and Experience. You covered about, yes, let me give you an update on that. Litcraft is still pushing forward really well. I, I actually was on the meeting yesterday where Tom was talking to the team. Um, I joined in on uh, a meeting because I was an investor and I'm an advisor specifically on the game. I get access to that meeting that I join every time I can. And so great stuff is happening on that game and they're moving forward. So I'm still very bullish on that game. Um, like anything, it's a risk that it will play out. Uh, their land sale is a little bit different on that, but they did an origin uh, lit pet sale as well as a land sale and I still think those will do well and I think the game will do really well and the development's coming along really nicely it was supposed to have the full version released by January and here we are nearing the end of February and the full game is still not released but it is way ahead of most everything out there with a game that people can play that has lots and lots of depth to it because most of the stuff out there that's anything play to earn, they're like, oh, we have an early pre-release. Everything there is really, really, really basic. Um, almost nothing out there has much depth to it. And this, will, it, even if they launch in the next month or month and a half, the depth on this far exceeds anything I've seen out there. So Tom S says, Cosmic Universe looks really good. Lancel was sold out in a few minutes, missed whitelisting due to busy schedule. That is the hard thing. Thanks, Stardust Ron, for saying, let's all hit that like button. If you're watching the live stream, it's a pain on your phone. So you have to exit the chat, then hit the like button, then go back in. If you can do that, that helps us keep growing. And we appreciate that, especially during these pullback times. Um, the growth is just helpful. We want to get this message out. But part of the thing with the growing helps us is that then we're able to get more great um, strategic relationships like the one we have with Juan Jane. And the one that we've had with Kitsumon, where we've been able to give you these valuable NFTs from Kitsumon for free, right? And give them out on the channel. And it's just one of the ways that if our growth hits certain numbers, and we'd really like to get to 100 or 200,000 total viewers, at that point, we can get any strategic relationships we want. And we're extremely picky with who we say yes to. We get all kinds of offers. In fact, I just had our call with Dr. and Stuff yesterday and then a couple of days prior, and it was like, no to that one, no to that one, no to that one, no to that one. And so there's very few that we do say yes to just because we're really picky on trying to bring you not only we like the giveaway aspect, but we only want to be talking about projects that we think have a way better than normal average chance for success. All right. I want to catch up um, floor price on the secondary market for the land he's saying is really, really cheap. The mint price was around $50. It is 1801 for the floor. What is one trading at right now? So the mint price was $50. So the question is, what is 1801? Um, so the game doesn't release until later this year. So land price may drop before release. It could. Do I know anything about Shirio Inu card game that's going to be play to earn still, but it seems expensive to buy their cards? Anything that throws Inu in there, right? They're really trying to capitalize off of somebody else's name. So I think of them as like a copycat project. So if they throw like stuff like that, like I saw this one, Katana Inu, right? And I was just like, why are they copying off of Shiba Inu? If it's not just kind of like a copy. And I saw a lot of this in 2017, 2018. In fact, you know, some projects came out that was like XRP Connect and other things that they were using a name of something that was popular. And so it, to me, I just kind of like to stay around. OK, so they went from fifty dollars to roughly two hundred fifty for the land might have a retracement after going five X in a generally boring market and then probably will do well. Um, so, yeah, Harmony One is at 14 cents, so. Cool. Thanks for doing the math on that 158 beats. That tells us generally where that's at. 
D, uh, we had some news prepared. Um, do you mind sharing some of the news? Yeah, not at all. I, I wanted to say I just I look I took a look at that uh, at the site for Cosmic Universe. It looks cool. I mean, it's hard to know, right? And some of this, some of what I want to talk about a little bit today is going to have to do with with that, like stuff that looks cool, but like like how do you know exactly, right? And um, we'll see if this uh, it's it's giving me issues sharing my screen right now. Um. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is exactly. It seems like it's frozen. Uh, I got the NFL all day re results while you're pulling that up. Yeah, I, I do. Now, got, let me share what I got. I'm excited about this. So I did get the Patrick Mahomes. I got the common number 389 and the common number 221. Those purchases went through. That I am super stoked about. I think I did have to pay $200 for each of these i'm okay with that purchase but those mint numbers are incredible for such a big star right and then i think generally i got some okay ones let's see cooper cup i know i bought today 1616 um i got some more patrick mahomes that these ones went through thank goodness that was so hard to get his cards aj Terrell, i got a couple of those interesting okay so well and, and we were talking about did, did we did we mention this on the stream already about how like yeah having multiples of like you didn't have enough lebrons and so you you kind of we didn't mention it homes. yeah but you you were able to buy a lebron from nba top shots and then uh but you only had one and so it's like how yeah you exit I'll, I'll share kind of the the theory on that right so my guess is the the market looks like it's now paused on nfl all day um, probably because there were just all kinds of problems going through and like it, it took a lot of tenacity trying to get anything on there. But uh, like I couldn't even get it to load for Tom Brady or Jamar Chase. I couldn't get a single Jamar Chase. And what happened with NBA Top Shots is the market was about like this, but NBA Top Shots was not proven yet. In fact, nobody knew who the what the flow blockchain was about. Nobody knew the company behind NBA Top Shots, Dapper Labs. And so they were actually paying um, YouTubers like $200 in store credit to talk about them, right? And so I, I watched this YouTuber when I was looking for videos on it. He's like, yeah, they gave me $200 to spend. So I remember getting some packs and everything. And I, I when the marketplace opened up, I bought a LeBron, like I was looking for LeBron James because I, I knew enough to know he was the number one basketball player. And possibly, you know, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. So I was like, okay, let me get some LeBron James. And I only end up buying one, unfortunately. And it was like $78. And here's the problem. See, it went to almost 30000 But when you have one, it's really hard to take profits. So when you buy multiples, it makes it easier to take profits. And so that's why, like, if you have, like, followed my videos in March and April, and I was talking about the Todd McFarlane Batmans with the VV, and you bought one, well, it makes it really hard for you to take profits because if you sell it, you're completely out. But if you'd bought five, it makes it easy to sell one, you know, when it went to from $80 all the way to $14,000 or even presently, I don't know what it's trading at today, it might be around 10000 or 9000 um, You're still up, what is that, eighty to 9000 You're still over 100x. But if you just have one, it makes it real hard to take profits. That's why buying multiples is the key if you're buying it for investment purposes. Now, part of me is a collector and part of me is an investor and the sides fight. So what I try to do is get multiples of what I'm investing in. So at least I can sell off some because the collector side of me is like, no, don't part with it. So I'll probably always have a Todd McFarlane Batman, though I'll probably sell off the remaining ones over time and just keep one. There we go. This was a great one. Do you want to share the details of this article? This is funny, crazy, frustrating, all in one article. I can't hear your audio at all for some reason. Oh, you're on mute. Okay. Though. Yeah, well, that would explain it, right? Yeah. So a tale of crypto enthusiasm gone wrong and then right. So it's interesting. So this there was this uh this project called Cool Kittens, right? And um you know, they were promising all this stuff surrounding these NFTs. Um, 
you know, there was going to be this per token uh, that was going to be affiliated with it, membership in a DAO in addition to these NFTs. But like, um, but yeah, then none of it happened, right? Like, so the website looked pretty cool. They had like a roadmap, you know, and then less than three weeks after announcing it, uh, they had sold for 70 bucks each, 160 grand. And then, um, yeah, then, then everything just went, went away, right? They started to delete everything, but, but this is interesting. So the forum was buzzing with excitement at first, something was odd. Some users communicated in bot like cadences, hyping the project, begging others to list NFTs on the secondary market above cost. A few people started ringing the alarm. Um, but you know, like th this guy said, he he bought you know three of them, two hundred twenty five bucks. He said, despite red flags, he remained hopeful. It was too until it was too late. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a rug pull. So you know, basically, you know, they walked away with one hundred sixty thousand dollars from the sale of these. Um, but it, it 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 took this weird, you know, they say it described it as a bizarre right turn. And basically someone within the community, um, I'm trying to see what his name was, uh, doesn't really matter, but he he basically hired an artist to recreate similar NFTs. Um, so uh let's see, they they changed it to uh, to what was called kitten coo. Yeah, la la la. He quickly assembled an ad hoc team. Uh, they hired this guy, an NFT artist. They fronted $7,000 to automatically redistribute all of the NFTs uh, uh, from the scam. So, so, so they gave them all these new uh, these new NFTs. So it, it basically, they wanted to make sure that, that if any of these were being resold, that the original scammers didn't have they didn't get any uh any royalties based on the sales um and so anyway i mean it's it's kind of a cautionary tale obviously with you know with rug pulls existing out there um but i took a look at um at uh you know some of these kitten coos are for sale um and uh, and you can pick them up for like a couple soul. Um, I don't know. It's kind kind of a cool idea. At, at least for me, it's like this. You know, people are uh, are rising up to to fight a rug pull that happened. Um, but yeah, Jay. I mean, what what are some of your thoughts on like on what we can do to to guard ourselves from from like rug pull type of situations? So, so some of the ways that the rug pulls kind of come out, right? So why does this project even rug pull? Well, this one was purposeful and they sent a tweet out later as like, ah, like I fooled you all again, you know, and this was like their second rug pull. And like these kind of people exist and they're just like bottom feeders, right? That take a chunk out of like in the innocent. And there's a ton of that in the crypto space in 2017 and especially in 2018, we saw a ton of that and they would raise all these funds and then they would like turn around and disappear. So a lot of what we try to bring to you on the channel is vetted. So the chance of it being rug pull is really, 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 really low, but it could always happen. What are some of the signs and other things you're looking for? Well, one of the signs is the sources that they come to you from. If they do a bunch of paid advertising on Discord and other things, well, then it could be a rug pull because rug pulls, they usually put some investment in. Like this one, they invested in an artist and they had like a site and everything. So they maybe paid a couple thousand dollars to produce a site, maybe paid an artist a thousand, two thousand dollars to come up with some things that they could sell. And, and then a lot, they went to the community directly and they often come to you as like, oh yeah, we're cutting out the VCs and we're going directly to the public and we're doing this. And so the reason they're cutting out the VCs, so they don't want to do video calls with their face recorded because that's what the VCs often require is do these video calls with their faces and they often record those video calls so that if they rug pull, they can turn those over to authorities and they don't want video calls with them exactly essentially selling the project and uh, the ideas behind it, because that all becomes video evidence that whatever local authorities eventually find them and pick them up and arrest them, that'll show up at their trial. Right. So they're trying, you know, they will be an anonymous team and uh, they'll do that. Now there are some reasons that there are anonymous teams out there. If you're, if you're building uh, the, if you think about it, Satoshi is an anonymous person, right? That was an anonymous team that developed Bitcoin. 
So like some of the projects that I'm in, I'm very cautious that there's uh, an anonymous team because that's usually a red flag. There are certain things that if you are building a privacy type coin or something, you probably have to keep your name anonymous. That doesn't mean that they aren't a rug pull. They could be, but they'll usually keep their names anonymous. But for almost everything else, why in the world would an NFT project be anonymous? Why? Why do they need to be anonymous? They don't need to be anonymous. And if they are, that should be a concern. So you'll you'll see a lot of the stuff. There was a lot of Binance smart chain projects when BSC became really hot in March that were all like pump and dump scams. So now that Solana NFTs are like going crazy, there's going to be a lot of pump and dump NFT scams. So and, you know, one soul at a time, like say they are only charging half a Solana token for them. But um yeah, that so they might only take up to a couple thousand dollars from a few individuals from some individuals, but for most people, they're taking fifty or a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, and that adds up. And then they just exit scam. Why they do that? Well, there's there's criminals out there, and some people thrive off of creating win lose situations. I I hate win lose situations because what the people don't that don't understand that do this is. There's no such thing as a win-lose situation. When you try to make a win for you, but you make sure the other side loses, somehow it always comes around and it creates a lose-lose situation. Fact is, I was studying the psychology of criminal behavior. What's interesting about it is, you know, when you watch these movies, you ever notice that they're always like one last job? They've already <laughs> robbed 50 banks and they're like, but after this last job, I'm going to retire. So you've stolen like $40 million over the last 20 years and you don't have enough to retire. Do you know why that is? When people acquire something unethically, do you know what they do? They get rid of it out of their lives. All but the sociopaths. Anybody with a conscience. Why? Because they don't want to think about it. So what's funny is if they do rob a bank and say they get two or $3 million out of it, they squander that money because it makes them feel guilty and they push it away and push it out of their lives. So most the wealthy that I've met in my life, the ones that are worth serious wealth, most of them are incredible people. Why? Because uh, they, they continue to attract money in their life. They don't feel ashamed of it because they've acquired it ethically. And well, that's not everyone. Sociopaths, sometimes a narcissist, they don't care because they don't really have a conscience. But those that do, you'll find that 80 to 85, maybe 90 percent of the wealthy are incredible human beings. It's the 10 percent to give them a bad name. On to our next story. Yeah. So, I mean, this has more to do with uh, or some more to do with uh, with the Solana ecosystem and NFTs and rug pulls. But um, there are a couple more uh, rug pulls within uh, Magic Eden, which is one of the, the larger NFT marketplaces on Solana. Um, I mean, basically, you know, there there was one that was called Balloons Balloonsville or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. One that's called King of Chess. King of Chess was an NFT collection that claimed to be an NFT chess game, which sounds cool to me. Instead, they sold they stole six hundred forty five sold fifty eight thousand dollars at the time. Um, in in um, uh, in 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 their defense magic eden they said that they refunded um i'm trying to say to see where where it was but they refunded the projects these two projects um but what he said uh you know balloonsville just deleted their twitter hey buddy we traced your account to ftx official and are working with law enforcement to share your id to police and ice investigators uh we have a lot to do but you're oh, whoops yeah, anyway, oh. you're a, you're an a-hole. <laughs> yeah, know. I didn't want to miss out on that last part because Yeah, the Solana ecosystem doesn't need you here. Um but but they basically following these events, Magic Eden had a come to Jesus moment. Um they're moving too fast, quality on the marketplace was suffering. So they're focusing on significantly fewer launches per week, higher quality projects. Um, you know, basically doing a lot more doxing, um, you know, to to make sure that this doesn't happen uh in the future you know so um yeah, they and, said at a minimum that the team will have to be privately doxxed to them yeah although we welcome public doxing because what that means is that they're fully doxed to the team and then if they like exit scam well then they can release that doxing to everyone 
And so like a, a lot of VCs do this too, right? And this is just kind of like the vetting that they do. That's like, hey, yeah, let's jump on a video call. And first like, no, no, I don't want to do a video call. So like one of the projects that we know, Soul Bank, they're not undocs. They're undocs to the public, but they are docs to some of the VCs and other people that they work with. And so should they exit scam, then I'm sure those VCs will release that information on them which includes like video calls and video is the best witness, right? Of yeah, somebody that did something bad. So, um, well, you know, so the route that they're going, that they'll, they'll offer them to be privately docs to them. That's the route they have to go. Right. So otherwise it's just going to be rife with people coming in and being able to prey on the unsuspecting. Right. Cause a lot of people are new in crypto. They don't know this stuff. They don't know how to avoid the bad stuff. They assume that other people have intentions like they do, which are generally good. And yet there's some sharks out there that are feeding on the, you know, people that are new, all the newbies. So this is cool. I'm glad they're getting rid of that. That Some interesting stuff on a generally down day. I want to ask the, the um, community how you're feeling. Like, give me uh, my, so I have better fingers on the pulse on what you're feeling in the crypto space. Like, do you feel like we're at the market? Are you concerned with what might happen in Ukraine that it might go bigger? Are you concerned what will happen in the U.S. and, you know, is Joe Biden going to be for or against crypto? Is the legislation going to be positive or negative? You know, we see this big retracement. Do you think it's going to go break to like the $28,000 levels or the $22,000 levels? Or do you think that this is a shakeout right before it then turns around and starts going the other way? Yeah. And I wish that I had more, like, I just don't have enough experience and time in, in the market to, to even know, like I, you know, what I know, I know what I'm feeling is a little bit of exhaustion. So I understand where, you know, you, you were bringing up views being down 75, 80% on, on other channels or whatever. And like, like I, I get that feeling, you know, it's like, uh, like another, you know, another red day or another, you know, trading sideways day, like, like, why am I going to, you know, spend time, you know, thinking about this more than I have to? Um, Randy Crypto Savage, our buddy, says to me the uncertainty of the executive order has not been priced in yet. Yeah. Nurse Cooper says shake out and then bull run. Yeah. I mean, both great comments from you. Has it not been priced in? I feel like some of it's been priced in. The uncertainty part has been priced in. But if it's really, really negative, that is not priced in yet. And it could bring it down. We'll see what Joe Biden does. I mean, I go back to, I remember when there was the election heading in the U.S. And Mike Novogratz seemed to think that Joe Biden would be way more pro-crypto than Trump because Trump wasn't really pro crypto, at least pro Bitcoin. He said some negative things about it. And Joe Biden was an unknown. He really hadn't addressed it. So we didn't know. But Mike Novogratz says that he knows a lot of people that know him and that the Biden administration would be very pro crypto. We have not seen that. And maybe what we have seen is Janet Yellen, who's not pro crypto, like really trying to push for some things that she wants to see. I don't know. Or maybe that is the Biden uh, administration stance it's really been kind of unclear so i definitely don't think we have clarity there generally i don't know that joe biden is pulling the strings there i think other people are i i don't know that um how much is joe biden running the ship or how much are the other people running the ship that's a little bit unclear to me and if it's other people running the ship who are they i i can't say i know i have some guesses but they're just guesses and so what those people's view of cryptocurrency is, is, is it positive or negative? I don't know, unless Janet Yellen is one of those people. I don't think she is. Um, we know her view is negative. Yeah, Dennis says Biden's a puppet. It, it seems like that, right? So, I mean, it's got all the hallmarks of it um, that he is. So, but, but who's pulling the strings behind it? I, I, I follow this stuff. I love watching history happen in present it's fascinating to me um and i love just to watch how it plays out and what decisions people make you know a lot of people think that there are good people in this world and bad people i think there's a lot of people and that some people tend to make a lot of bad choices some people make good choices but a lot of people in this world are generally good people that sometimes make dumb or bad decisions and some people out there that might be malevolent that make a few good decisions 
So I always get fascinated just watching what decisions people make. You know, Joe Biden, he's driven by like this ego, like a lot of people who reach high levels of politics. Um, and, uh, you know, some interesting Joe Biden's a very interesting president of the U.S., I would say that. So, yeah, it would be interesting to see how his legacy comes down. It probably we could fairly say it hasn't gone very well for him so far. And we'll see what his stance is on crypto. And then possibly this year, I, there's elections in what, November in the U.S. And um, for the House and Senate, which may change hands politically, it usually does after the first two years of a president. And um, then it might change hands. And hopefully those incoming freshmen senators and House of Representatives are very pro crypto. In fact, supposedly it's supposed to be a landslide to the other side. We'll see, you know, um, who knows? Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. A lot of time between now and then that Everybody. the sentiment right now might not be the sentiment in gosh, that's like eight months from now. It's a long time from now. Yeah. And Hillary was going to win in a landslide too, you know, so, so who knows exactly. But, but the thing that I hope for, because like, you know, grandpa Joe, like, like how can you expect him to like, even like, like my parents are 70 pretty much and they have zero interest in, in crypto whatsoever. And I don't blame them. Like, I, you know, I'd be like, whatever, like I, you know, why do I need to know about this? And I can't imagine that. And like, granted, he is the president of the United States. So hopefully like he is taking it a little bit more seriously because it is something that needs, you know, needs some policy on and that sort of a thing. But, but like you're suggesting if, if some like freshman people can come in like in their late thirties, early forties, you know, who understand and have a desire to understand cryptocurrency a little bit more than hopefully that, you know, that will at least, steer some policies in, in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like we're running short on time. I appreciate all your interaction, your thoughts. I love these live streams. It gives me a chance to interact with you more directly. Um, so yeah. And nurse group said he just joined our Patreon. So if you have any trouble getting connected up to discord, then message um, nine, one of our admins in telegram and, and he'll let me know. I'll verify to him that you're in there. And that's if you have any trouble. Frequently, you won't. So that you can join our pre-live streams on Friday that we do. And that gives me the best, very best chance to interact with you. Because uh, then you can join. You can ask your direction, uh, your questions with voice and actually video too. So are you ready to be a rainmaker and join the Navy SEALs of crypto and level up your crypto game? I know a few of you out there today are new. Um, I know this contrarian approach that we take, coupled with fundamental analysis and add in a lot of patience, it works and it works extremely well over time. There's nothing I've seen that works better that's simpler. I know there's a lot of attraction towards day trading and, you know, for maybe 2% of the population, that's right. But about 7% of the population that does that actually makes money at it and 93% don't. It is helpful to know that stuff, but I like this contrarian approach. Couple it with fundamental analysis where you're looking for strong, fundamentally strong projects and then wait, buy it when it's cheap and wait till it's high. I know this works and I have several friends already multimillionaires from this approach. And I suspect in the coming five years, many, many members of our audience are going to be at some crazy numbers. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how that all plays out. If you haven't already hit that notifications bell and check out our videos when they pop up we do do live streams monday wednesday friday at 11 a.m pacific time we also have an additional vv live stream wednesday evenings at 8 30 are we still doing 8 30 pacific d yeah i think that's the plan um yeah we better confirm that with uh with doc um but i think that's the plan to move it up an hour so we'll pay, follow jay on twitter and we'll we'll tweet it out so that would be 7 30 p.m well. pacific if we move it up an hour yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah follow us on twitter and we'll hit live stream and as well as if you're subscribed and you i mean check around that time that video you get some of the best alpha on vv collectibles um from dr stuff's amazing and we have a really good guest today he's super funny he covers vv all the time and so you'll really enjoy him um and so we're going to focus on this next month or two having a lot of guests on that talk about vv all the time and get some of their take so we can bring you the very best alpha thanks so much we'll see you all next time remember no rain no gain <laughs>